So you want to rank higher on Google, you want people to stay on your website longer, and you want them to have a good page experience because you understand next year, page experience is going to be a more important ranking factor. But inside of this video, I'm going to show you how to dramatically lower your bounce rate. Now that for those of you that don't know what a bounce rate is, it's basically a metric inside of Google Analytics that will tell you how often people leave your website shortly after they visit. And obviously this is a problem if you can't get people to stay on your website because it either means you're targeting the wrong keyword phrases in Google or you have a bad page experience which I'm going to show you how to fix and this is really a non-negotiable video for you to watch because with core web vitals becoming something that's going to be very important in 2021 it's very important that you watch this video throughout the entire way to understand how you can drastically lower your bounce rates. By the end of this video, you're gonna learn how to get a website that has under 10% bounce rate. And with the average being around 40 to 60%, that's enough to get you ahead of your competitors. So let's get into the first step and I'm gonna bring you through each and every tip over the shoulder. So probably the first thing that we have to consider when actually trying to open up our page speed and get it to be a little bit higher is checking to see where you are now. I like using the PageSpeed Insights tool by the Google developers to actually test this. And all you have to do is throw in a domain like maintainitall.com and you can actually get a score from Google that basically says zero out of 100, how fast is this website? And so there's a few things that's obviously gonna affect the speed of your website and Google will tell you a little bit more about what's affecting the speed of your website. But it's also critical to know that this isn't the most important factor when it comes to ranking. Now, yes, we can remove unused JavaScript, we can size images a little bit better, we can avoid serving legacy JavaScript to modern browsers, but unfortunately, a lot of this stuff is what actually makes the website look so nice. And if you don't wanna sacrifice the design of the website and you want nice, crisp, clear images and you want different types of JavaScript tools that you may be using, like this make a payment option at the top that goes to a service Titan link, which is an outside software, that unfortunately having a fast page speed of 100 out of 100 is almost impossible. And this gets even harder when you start optimizing for mobile. As you can see, a 65 out of 100 should be considered green when it comes to mobile. Most websites don't even make it that high that's local that have this much content like the website maintain it all. And so Google will tell you basically everything inside of here and it's a performance score is calculated directly from the metrics. In the calculator you can see right here, it'll actually tell you from the Lighthouse tool everything that you're using to calculate that number. And generally it's a good gauge as to what your actual site speed is, but the best gauge is going to be turning off the Wi-Fi in your home, going directly onto your cell phone service and typing in the domain and seeing how fast it loads for yourself. The second piece that I wanna talk about is avoiding pop-ups. So for example, right here you can see that this maintain it all is practicing safe social distancing and non-contact services. Uh, please call this number for an estimate. Instead of using a pop-up, considering using a pop-up banner at the top of the website that potentially stays on scroll. This is important because if you have a pop-up coming to the website, it's gonna increase your overall bounce rate, lowering your metrics towards Google. Now, as you know, Maintain It All has a really good bounce rate inside of the Google search engines. Their power washing site specifically, you can see it's at about a 10%. Last yesterday, last seven days, it's at about a 3%. So people are spending time on this website generally longer than an average session. And because of that, we wanna make sure that we're not using pop-ups. I was navigating a website that we managed yesterday and I quickly saw that this one has a pop-up and this is something that I would advise our design team to actually remove. So you can see as I start scrolling on this website, a pop-up is supposed to be coming on. I think that it's because my second time visiting, uh, it's not showing up, but generally, these notification banners at the top that potentially stay on scroll are always gonna be better than having a pop-up, which is ultimately gonna increase your actual bounce rate. The next thing is unnecessary plugins. So because the Duda editor uses widgets, which are basically hard-coded ways to add things to your website inside of their actual editor, we're not using any plugins on our client sites that's going to install these large kilobyte, megabyte, or even gigabyte files into our actual website builder. If you're using something like WordPress, generally you're gonna have plugins that can overall slow down your site. And if you were to do a search for most popular WordPress plugins, you can probably find the sizes of these plugins and every single plugin that you add is actually gonna add uh, weight to your actual website. So you can see that WordPress actually has a page on their website that talks about uh, the different types of plugins that are actually uh, uh, most popular for them. So for example, I know Yoast SEO is one of the most popular plugins that people use. And these plugins are always updating and these plugins are always being hacked and these plugins are always you know, uh, 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 being updated and because of that, 
it's increasing the size of the actual plugin that you're adding to your website overall, lowering the actual site speed that you have. And you can see, I can't see something in here that says size, but I'm sure if you checked inside of your WordPress, you can see exactly how big these files are. But every plugin that you add to your site adds weight to the site. So it's always better to use something like Duda that's actually gonna give you widgets already hard coded into their platform and you have the ability to hard code these widgets into the platform so you can get this stuff done pretty quickly. Now, if you're using Duda as your website builder and you want to shop different types of plugins and you don't want to hard code, there's actually a website called thecamel.co and you can actually search for widgets inside of here. They actually offer widgets and you can actually go in and buy these different types of widgets that Camel actually sells. And so you can buy these widgets and then they'll install them directly into your actual Duda builder, giving you widgets that you don't technically have to hard code. So for example, they have promotion buttons, image panning, follow us buttons, profile list, all of this stuff that our team personally has already pretty much developed. But you can see that if you are not a native developer and you want to add quote unquote plugins, these would be quote unquote widgets to your site. You can do so by visiting the camel or you can just code them yourself. And so now without further ado, we've got to talk about usability, right? Uh, now that the site speed is set up the right way, you're not installing a lot of these different plugins. You can start to really think about the usability of the website. And that always starts with the goal. And so there's a few things that we like to do for usability that makes the site easier to use. One is having clear and actionable navigation items that people can highlight over and scroll over. You can see how when I put my mouse over these different links here, they actually change colors and that's affecting usability. You can see that when I click on this button, it changes colors, that's affecting usability. If you want to have a non-frustrating user experience, I recommend taking the following steps, okay? The first one is make sure that you're using custom photos, right? A lot of the times people can detect a stock photo on a website like they can detect a bad friend when they see one. And this is one of the things that we highly encourage each and every single one of our clients to do is to actually get a photo shoot before they begin working with us. And if you think about it, if you're in the marketing business as a seller of premier products and services, then you should not use stock photos. You can use stock photos for certain examples if you don't have a picture to accommodate, but ultimately your website should have good user experience which comes with having custom photos. As you can see, this image of this truck, this image of a gentleman sitting in front of the door, these are all different things that we use to actually attract visitors to the website and know that this is a real local company. Now the next thing is engagement of the website. You know, there has to be engaging factors and that's why you see buttons pretty much all over the place when we use our websites. We want people to click these buttons and we want people to fill out the contact forms and we want them to navigate the website because it's one of those things that's going to overall impact the actual usability of the website and giving the user less frustration. If you just think about it this way, giving your user less frustration is one of the most important things that you can do. And what's a really good way of doing that? Well, it's having clear contact information. If the customer doesn't know how to contact you, they're gonna have a hard time actually using your services. Probably one of the most frustrating things is going to a website and seeing that it satisfies your basic needs. So for example, if I landed on this power washing page, I looked at what was offered on this page, I liked the price, I liked everything that was being said, and when I headed over to the footer, I couldn't find any contact form or any information about location, and it was very difficult to actually do that. And because of this, generally speaking, when we work with clients, you know, they, they like the fact that we add the map, they like the fact that we add the contact form, they like all of this stuff, but for the user, it's very experiencing. It's very, it's very important because the user needs to see this information for them to feel comfortable to contact this actual company. One quick tip about this as well is keep your site updated as much as possible. This is a client that we're working with called Bennett Plastics, and we use blogging to keep their site fresh and to keep the content rolling. And because of this, it's going to allow visitors that are either normal customers or, or new customers that are coming to the website actually see their thought leadership and they, this company can actually share these posts with their existing customers to give them more information on how to make your injection molding products stick out. And because we're targeting keywords like plastic injection molding uh, in New Jersey, which is where they're located, um, you can see that just because we are adding consistent content, focusing on the good user experience, that this page is actually ranking higher on the search results. We're not doing the ads, but they're number one inside of the Google Maps, and then they're also number two inside of the organic search results. And this all comes down to creating blog content on a consistent basis so we can keep this website as fresh as possible. And that leads me to my next point about usability and lowering your bounce rate. 
is make sure that your title tags are, the, are correct and that they're accurate and your meta descriptions are accurate as well. Uh, in my last video, I talked about how get, uh, misleading somebody from a click to a page is the ultimate way to destroy your user experience. We like putting the brand first inside of the actual title tag. And many SEOs would say that that's not necessarily a good idea because that's not putting your keyword all the way to the left. Many SEOs believe that if you actually edit your title tag and you put your keyword all the way to the left, so instead of the brand being here, the keyword would be here instead of the brand. But ultimately, the best way to increase your user experience is increase the experience of your existing customers visiting your website. And if your existing customers can't find you because your branded name is not inside of your title tag, you're going to destroy your bounce rate. It's going to go down. And ultimately, you're going to lose a lot of your existing customers that are looking for your brand or business. And this is a really good way to start to use SEM Rush's tool for the page audit to actually go in and start to do some of this analysis and see which of your title tags, which of your meta descriptions, and which of your tags on your website overall don't have a good uh, uh, a setting there. And so you can use a lot of the tools that SEM Rush offers for you to do this. I like using something called Site Audit. And then in Site Audit, I can basically see which title tags and, and which other recommendations that we should make to actually get this page to be more consistent. So um, you can see that there are warnings that they tell you here. And uh, one page doesn't have a meta description. It's this page right here. And if I open this page inside of the Google search result, and I look at it, the page is password protected. So that's fine that it doesn't have a meta description. But ultimately, you can actually see all the pages that don't have meta descriptions and optimize them. You want to set the expectation for the person clicking through to the website so they can actually enter a meta description that's going to make sense. You never want to fool and use clickbait to actually get people to click through because you understand click through rate is a very important factor. But if you want to decrease your bounce rate, you want to make sure that your title tag accurately reflects that page. You should be doing the same thing with your ads as well if you're running any type of Google ad. And because Developmark runs ads to your specific website and your actual the client's website, uh, we make sure that the ad reflects the actual page accurately. So you can see that this page is talking about all on four dental implants starting at $15,000. The meta description talks about how many implants were placed, affordable options, Manchester, custom treatments, they accept insurance, uh, multiple teeth, consultation, 2,997 per implant, single tooth, all of this great stuff. Now this is important because if somebody clicks on this ad and they go to a page that basically talks about um, you know, uh, uh, implants at uh, $1,000 instead of $15,000, you're gonna damage your overall bounce rate. If you're sending Google Ads traffic to your website, you've gotta be very careful with this as well because analytics will actually track the sources of the different types of things that are coming to your website. And so if, you're, if your highest source is paid traffic, which a lot of clients are, then what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna destroy your bounce rate if you're sending it over to your website and that's ultimately gonna decrease your user experience signals to Google making you uh, less, less desirable inside of the search results. This is another reason I love using SEM Rush because it'll send you emails or your SEO team or our team emails on a weekly basis that will basically just let us know what's gotten better and what's gotten worse. Which leads me to my next topic is if you have blank pages and technical errors, it's gonna be really difficult to get a higher bounce rate because people are going to be exiting off of the website. So for example, here you can see that five pages returned with a 404 status code, which means that that visitor wasn't able to find the actual page. There wasn't a canonical URL nor 301 redirect from HTTP homepage to the HTTPS version. And there are six internal links on the website that are broken. So that means at any time, if someone's navigating one of our websites and they decide to click on this 3D prototyping link, this page would show a 404, which would ultimately get them to either exit the site or continue navigating. Either or, we don't wanna risk that. And so that's why we set up these alerts inside of SEM Rush to let us know on a weekly basis if there's anything new that's happening in our website. And guys, this is important because if you're updating your website on a monthly basis for yourself, your client, or you're hiring an agency to do this for you, it's important that as you're updating, you're also making sure nothing's broken through the cracks because that's gonna increase your actual bounce rate. The next way to drastically decrease the bounce rate is to have high quality content. So Google's actual December core algorithm update told us that if your content is free from spelling or stylistic issues, if it's produced well and does not appear sloppy or hastily produced, if the content is mass produced or outsourced to a large number of creators, or if the content doesn't have an excessive amount of ads that distract or interfere, these are pop-ups, these are banners, these are AdSense, 
or if the content doesn't display well on mobile devices, it's not considered good content. And that is why with every single piece of content that we write on our client websites, for example, this right here, burglar alarms, right? This content is very, very difficult to find any grammar or spelling issues because we write all of the content in-house and we use offshores to actually write our expertise content because we can't simply afford to hire lawyers to write content for us for a law site. But with that being said, I recommend you check out the tool Triple Checker. This tool is going to basically run grammar audits on your website on a basically a monthly basis if you wanted to check that out. And if you needed to write content and if you needed to offshore some of your content because you don't have time, I highly recommend you check out Verblio, which is going to basically allow you to set up a plan and these writers get it right almost every single time. But with that being said, it's important to read this actual search document that talks about some of the different types of things that Google is looking for when it comes to low page quality content. You wanna avoid that as much as possible. You wanna stay within these guidelines because when Google makes another algorithm update, you're not gonna see any ranking decreases. And the last one that I wanna talk about is it's really hard to measure this if you don't even have it set up. And so Duda does a really good job with this. And inside of here, setting up Google Analytics is very easy. Inside of the settings tab, you can actually visit Google Analytics and you can add the code for that Google Analytics tracking ID directly inside of the actual analytics or, or website editor. And this is really easy to do because inside of Google Analytics, you can head over to the administrative section and you can easily find this code and you can easily get it set up. So property settings tracking info is going to allow you to do a few things. One is it's going to allow you to actually add in your Google Analytics code. If you're doing your own website or if you're working with a company that's doing your own website and this is not set up, that's a good excuse to fire that company because they're not even tracking what they're doing for you. And you can actually send test traffic to that actual website and then get Google to basically see if that website's actually up and running. And then once you do that, it'll tell you if it's up and running. But also you should have your global site tag, G tag, G tag set up on your actual property so it can track everything on the website. This is really important if you're running any type of Google ads. This is really important if you're trying to track the sources that are coming to your website. At Developmark, we want to make sure that we can tell our clients which sources are coming from where. And so the Google site tag provides streamlined tagging across Google site measurements, conversion tracking, remarketing tracking, and just gives you better all control. And so when we go back to the home page of the Google Analytics account for this profile, maintain it all soft watching, we're going to want to, in the near future, start to retarget some of these users. In the last 90 days, the website's gotten 203 users since we've published it. And so later on, we may want to run a Google ads campaign early in the summer that's going to bring visitors back to this website. And that's why you need that Google tag. But also we're going to want to make sure that we have conversion tracking set up on the website. That's going to be a small box. If you did have it set up at the bottom here, I can show you an example of what this would actually look like. And uh, oh, it's because I'm in my uh, actual personal account here. Um, but you're going to want to have something that's set up that basically tells you about the conversion tracking so you can actually tell what's working and what's not. So this is a good example here. This is a conversion tracking set separate here. So uh, we're tracking visits that are longer than two minutes, website form responses, phone store, uh, uh, store phone calls. And if you look at a 90 day thing here, we can see that 432 uh, form responses, uh, 2000 visits, 5000 more than three pages. These are beating our goals that we're recommending. But also you can also see inside of here how much traffic has gone to this website and we're still able to consistently do a low bounce rate. And because of that, if you were to go into your search browser and type in wholesale appliances uh, for sale, you can probably find the website here that we have listed. It's right here on the second of the organic search results, same day appliances. And because this page has such a good user experience, has a low bounce rate, low exit rate, and has those conversion signals we are talking about, this page ultimately will rank higher inside of the Google search engines, giving our client peace of mind that they're working with a company that's actually doing what they're supposed to be doing and giving them more of those features. Now, you can see all of the recommendations that I said before are actually being implemented on this site. You have large navigation, you have custom images, you have text that's fo uh, formatted the correct way, keywords inside of the text, right? So custom wholesale appliance manifests. You can see our page shows up for that. And then we have, you know, cool dynamic text here, more keywords, brands that they're using. And we're basically matching the click of when somebody searches uh, wholesale appliances or whatever they're searching. This is the type of page that they want to see. 
And if you can create an experience that's actually doing uh, the page that they want to see, you're gonna have a lot more success with all of this. So now I wanna dive into some just very quick tips on doing some of this research after you've gone through the basics. So the first one is inside of the actual behavior tab inside of Google Analytics, you can actually see something called exit pages. And exit pages are gonna show you which pages people generally leave after they come to your website. And you can also get really advanced with this and start to add a segment of that stuff. So if you want to just see organic sections of who's coming to your website from organic and where they're leaving, you can do this. And so you can see that when I do organic, it's gonna show me a line in orange and a line in blue. These are the two differentiators of traffic, so you can actually do that. And then inside of here, I'm just going to go ahead and put December of, let's say, 2019 to 2020. So we have a lot of data to actually compare. And you can see inside of this data that a lot of the exit pages, uh, you know, the, the, the average percentage, the organic has less exit, the, the overall has more exit. And you can see that you can filter which pages have the highest exit. So now it's by no surprise that the kitchen slash or how to stop your refrigerator door from squeaking has a high exit because this is simply just a blog post that where we wrote on the client's website. And actually funny enough, oh, I'm sorry, it's not a 404. It's because you guys could probably see that there's two dashes inside of there. I was gonna say, that's clearly the reason as to why uh, this page is, um, is not ranking well is because it's a 404, but it's actually not but you can see that 50% of the people that come to this page leave the website and so the bounce rate's very high. And probably the reason why they're visiting, they're, they're going to this website is to just get really quick information. And this is why Google is going more towards that actual featured snippet so people don't even have to go to the website. I would probably put my money on it. If I search this keyword phrase, um, our client's website would show up high at the top. In fact, they're in the featured snippet. And so it, it, it makes sense that it's a high bounce rate because people probably click this and then they leave the website. And so um, you can go through this data and start to really assess uh, which one of your pages have the highest exit rates. And then from that, from that analysis, you can either work on those pages or you can simply just create new pages and try to avoid working on those pages to get more traffic. But ultimately you can filter this by the highest amount of exits. I like looking at the traffic and exit uh, uh, totals here. So you can see uh, inside of here, now, obviously, if a page is getting more website visitors, it's gonna have more exits. So don't think that this number is important. You really wanna look at this percentage because the percentage is gonna tell you out of 100 people that came from Facebook left this page, and you're probably gonna see a lot of this inside of here. So I would recommend looking at this data at your own time. But ultimately, this is a really good way to just give you the type of information that will help you make the changes to improve your overall bounce rate. Now, the next recommendation I'm gonna make is that you actually head over to the audience tab and head over to your overview of your actual website. This is gonna tell you some key data that you're gonna to have to know to actually make some of these better decisions. So the first one is, where are your new visitors versus your returning visitors? This, if it says more returning visitors than new visitors, you should be making your website to attract returning visitors as well as satisfy them to increase your user experience and your overall bounce rate. But you should also, if it's new visitors, you have a few seconds to tell those new visitors about your company so that you don't leave right away. Generally, returning visitors are really easy to satisfy because they already know your company from some sort of actual angle. And so with that being said, this is gonna give you a lot of metrics over here that you can take a look at. Um, the first metric that I wanna show you inside of here is the actual pages per session. Ultimately, the higher the pages per session you can get on your website, the more it's gonna rank inside of the Google search results. And you can do this by just following basic SEO tactics like internal linking and actually creating more content on your website that's clickable. You know, sometimes I wish I had the scope to see a lot of different analytics accounts and although you can use SEMrush's traffic analytics tool to actually check on a domain, if that domain doesn't have enough data that's actually coming in through the site, it's gonna be kind of hard to actually see that information. Now, obviously, if I typed in apple.com, there's so much data on this website that it's actually gonna show me the average visit duration, the bounce rate, the pages per visit, the unique visits, et cetera. But if I typed in something like developmark.com, it's gonna be very difficult for me to actually see this stuff. It's gonna say 100% bounce rate, which is not true. One page per visit, 2.3K, literally these analytics right here, 
they're, these are accurate. The, the visits, the unique visits, the pages per visit are not accurate, unfortunately, and the visit duration are not accurate because this site doesn't have enough traffic. So use these types of tools at your own will. And the other one that I want you to take a look at is average session duration. This is a number right here that should definitely be a little bit higher for this type of website. But ultimately, if the users are finding what they need to find within that average session duration, then you're pretty good. If you can envision, the rule of thumb here is if you can envision visiting a page like this and audit, and finding whatever you it is you need to find within a minute, then that's a good rule. There is no time here that should say, you know, it should be this number. Every website's gonna be different. But what I will say is if your average session duration is like 10 seconds, obviously nobody can find what they're looking for in 10 seconds. So ultimately those people are probably just leaving your website and damaging your analytics as well as your actual uh, conversion friendly. And so with that being said, this number here, assess it and ask yourself if people can visit my website and find what they need to see within a minute and five seconds, then we're doing a good job. Now, if I change this over back to Power Washing PA, um, which is the website that we were looking at, if I look at this actual website here for the, the Power Wash site, if I were to take a look at this site, you can see that if I head over to my audience tab and I go to overview, all of the data is gonna be completely different. So you can see that this average session duration is a little bit higher. There's a lot more returning users. The pages per session is 4.51. And so this is a little different, right? So now we're talking about a higher returning visitor, a more of a, a less of new visitor, higher average session duration, higher pages per session. And you can do this and start to analyze some of the accounts that you're working with, right? And so maximum sound and security, another client that we work with, uh, you can see that the bounce rate is 7.59 but most of, the, of them are new visitors, returning visitors, and all of this data, which I'm surprised that there's not a lot of returning visitors for this site, because this is a, a company that has a lot of uh, actual uh, um, uh, existing customers that use their website for this type of stuff. Uh, Pro Locksmith Orlando, let's take a look at this one. Um, and you can see that all of these variables are destined to change. And so this is the data that you should be looking at to make the determinations of what you actually need to optimize for. And ultimately, guys, to break this down into one last solid tip, is use SEO to your advantage to increase your bounce rate or to improve it. For example, these are the keywords that Developmark's showing up for. So for the keyword phrase New York SEO, we're position number one with 3,600 monthly volume. That's a good phrase for us because that makes sense. We are a company that services New York and does SEO. Developmark, this is a great phrase because that's our brand. Connecticut SEO, that's a great phrase because that's what we do. Naugatuck Patch, although, has, makes absolutely no sense. We have nothing to do with Nagatuck Patch, but because we wrote something about it on our website, which is a bad keyword to target, it's actually bringing visitors to our website that actually do have nothing to do with our business goals. And this is why it's really important for you to do some sort of keyword research to actually see what makes sense and what doesn't. And so if I was looking at keyword research and I was typing in Connecticut SEO, I want to look inside of this tool and I want to basically see all of the different keyword opportunities that I can rank for. So there's, there's actual keyword variations that you should be looking at. And then there's also related keywords that you should be looking at to actually use for your SEO strategy. All of these keywords will likely increase or improve my bounce rate, decreasing my actual bounce rate percentage because the keyword matches the website. There's so many times we get clients or we see websites that you guys send us that the keywords don't match literally anything. And that's something that's going to destroy your actual bounce rate, giving you less of a user experience, lowering your actual SEO score. And there you have it, guys. That's how you get a very low bounce rate for your website or for your clients' websites and a few easy steps. If you have any questions, feel free to leave some comments down below and I'll get back to them, every single one of them. And I encourage you to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for when I upload so you're the first one to know when this new content comes out. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.